So, uh, hello everyone, and uh, welcome to today's webinar on Hilbert College MSM Agent E Summit 2020 Live. Our attendees are still in the process of joining the webinar. Uh, so, whoever have joined the webinar, on behalf of all of us in Hilbert College and MSM, I hope you, your families, and all your colleagues are all safe and well. We are seeing uh, positive signs on the vaccine development across the globe and all of humanity is getting accustomed to the new normal as the pandemic is spreading everywhere, sparing no countries. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen from all parts of the world. I would like to thank you all for taking your time out and being here today with us. My name is Jim George, uh, Manager Global Marketing Office overseeing US institutions at MSM and I'll be your moderator for today's webinar. I'm delighted and pleased to introduce today's presenters, Ms. Kim, who is the Director of Graduate and Online Enrollment and Student Engagement, Ms. Lisa, who is the International Student Admissions Counselor, and Ms. Lee, who is the International Student Service Coordinator and the PDSO at uh, Hilbert College. Mr. Brian Phil Johns, who is the Director of Enrollment Operations, will also be joining us shortly for the Q&A session. A heartily welcome to all our presenters for joining this webinar. Before I hand over the mic to our presenters, I'll run through the housekeeping requirements that are needed for today's presentation and the Zoom webinar platform. So what's today's agenda for the webinar? Yes, you'll be hearing a comprehensive presentation on Hilbert College by our esteemed panelists. You'll hear on what's the new normal at Hilbert College and how uh, in-person classes will take place for fall 2020. Uh, get an insight on how Hilbert College has made the application process easy for international students. Uh, the personal care and attention every international student will receive at Hilbert College. And to get further insights on careers of the future at Hilbert College uh, that Hilbert College has to offer. As a reminder, everyone is currently muted and will encourage you to type in your questions and comments throughout the presentation in the Q&A session present in the control panel. Later on in the presentation, we'll have a brief moment for the Q&A, at which point you'll also be encouraged to type in your questions. In case you're facing any technical issues, please feel free to drop in a message in the chat box. We will also be having two polling sessions during the webinar so all our attendees will have to be attentive during the presentation. We'll expect your active participation during these polls. This webinar is recorded and will be posted on our YouTube channel afterwards. For those who have just joined in, welcome to today's webinar on Hilbert College MSM Agent eSummit 2020 Live. So without further ado, let's kick start things off by welcoming our esteemed panelists. So Lee, over to you. You switch the slide, sorry. So uh, welcome everybody. We're so glad that you were able to make it today. We'll just be going over a brief overview of our admissions requirements specifically for international students as well as um, you know the different ways that we um, maybe support the international student uh, population. We do we are excited to welcome back several of our international students this uh, this upcoming fall. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that and how that's been impacted by COVID-19 as well and what measures we're taking. We will go to the next slide. So again, this is our, uh, the presenters from Hilbert today. This is our contact information. Feel free to reach out to us. I'm seeing the potentially having a volume issue. I'm sorry about that. Let me see if I can figure that out. I'm hoping this is better. If not, please let me please let me know um, otherwise. But this is our contact information um, as listed in this slide. So please feel free to reach out to any of us, um, especially um, if you have visa questions, um, any questions. I know, especially with some consulates being closed, I have reached or I have been contacted many times uh, by students. So please feel free to reach out if you have questions about that. Next slide. So just a quick update regarding our uh, handling with COVID-19. Uh, in March, our students did uh, return home. Um, some, uh, most of our uh, international students did end up returning to their home country. Um, here and there, there were a few that remained in the state of New York, um, whether they had a, a contact or another 
you know, another way of staying, but we, we provided um, accommodations for students who were not able to return back home, who were not able to find anything, um, not able to find any, um, you know, situation or contact that they had. Um, but so uh, typically uh, what you will see is during the uh, enrollment, an international student can only be enrolled on one online course per, per, ter or per session per semester. However, our students were able to transition to that being fully online. CVIS did make that temporary allowance um, for students to be able to do so. Uh, so our international students were able to proceed with their online courses for the remainder of the spring 2020 semester um, without uh, being out of status. Um, with CVIS allowing the international students, again, to, to have that, it, it allowed them to continue with their, with their coursework and continue to pursue their degrees. Uh, we will be returning to campus in person on August 31st, which is our first day of classes. Um, we've taken measures to ensure that our students, uh, especially um, those coming out of state and um, out of the country, are you know, taking the necessary precautions. Uh, we do have, currently in New York State, we have a list together of hotspots, what we're calling hotspot states. Um, so our governor is mandating that any students coming from those states are required to, or rather anyone coming from those states are required to quarantine for 14 days. So right now we actually have students who have come from any of those states on the list, as well as international students um, being quarantined. Um, so they are on, they are moved into their residence halls and they are quarantining for two weeks. Um, at which point we will then have the in-state students, um, the New York State students who are going to arrive right after the quarantine ends. So we will be online and in class from August, or I'm sorry, we will be in class uh, physically on the campus from August 31st to November 18th. Uh, that's around our Thanksgiving break. And then the rest of the semester going to about mid-December, the rest of it will be online. So students can return home at, in November and then we will have announcements regarding the spring 2021 20, semester later in the term. So where is Hilbert College? So we are located just outside of the city of Buffalo, which is the second largest city in the state of New York. Um, of course, you're thinking of New York City. That's the first one. That's where I'm from. But it's really nice to have Buffalo nearby because I'm very, um, you know, I'm very much, you know, used to having city and, you know, being able to go to concerts and all this sorts of stuff, just being able to do a little bit of everything. And I'm noticing right now the red dot is actually right now on Lake Erie, but if you move it a tiny bit to the right, if you just imagine it there, we're directly below the city of Buffalo. Um, you can see that we're also pretty close to a lot of major cities, um, short car rides from Cleveland, Pittsburgh, um, Toronto. One of the things that students you know, made what I do on the weekend is go see Toronto, go see a basketball game there, something like that. Um, that's definitely an option for our students. Of course, for our international students, they will have to have that I-20 endorsed um, by myself or Brian or Caitlin, who is one of our other designated school officials. Um, but you, as you can see, we're very nearby to a lot of different places. Um, we're also known for Niagara Falls, which is just less than an hour away. Um, one of the seven wonders of the world. Uh, the, you know, we've been there before, several of us who live here, um, but it's also something that a lot of uh, you know, tourists come in for. Um, so it's something that's very nearby to us. We, can, we hopefully will arrange a trip uh, for the international students when it's safe to do so, um, you know, when we're able to be in larger gatherings. Kim, did you want to present on this one? Okay. Um, Hilbert, our, our, we were founded um, by Mother Colette Hilbert in 1957. So we started out, our institution started out, out as a two-year college to train sisters. And we are founded on our eight Franciscan ideals. So incorporated into all of our activities on campus, incorporated into all of our academics, our social life, is we try to strive and learn and develop and enhance um, service, respect, compassion, peace, joy, hope, vision, and integrity. So this is just the, the founding of our college, the ideals that we try to instill into our students, as well as our faculty and our staff on campus. And you know, this, what, this is what drives Hilbert College. Next slide, please. Forward. <laughs> so Lisa, I'll let you talk about the Hilbert community. 
Sure, sure. Um, <clears throat> so um, our Hilbert community, um, we have a slide listed here talking about some of the um, features and benefits of coming to school here at Hilbert. Uh, we offer small class sizes. Um, we are approximately, <clears throat> pardon me, we're approximately about 900 students, um, which means small class sizes. Um, the student faculty ratio is approximately um, 12 to one. Um, some classes can be a little bit bigger, but never usually a, a bigger than about 20 students per class. And what that really means is it's a small class environment, gives students a much greater opportunity to ask questions and participate in discussions. Um, we have wonderful faculty who are very dedicated with um, excellent practical experience that they bring from the community. Um, we also offer a number of student organization and club opportunities for students to be able to really enhance their learning here and to, you know, certainly have a lot of fun while they're here on campus, make friends. We'll talk a little bit more about that um, later. Um, we do also offer Division Three athletics, um, as well as intramural and club sports. Um, and then um, really very notable is we're among the most affordable private institutions in New York State. Uh, we are uh, positioned very well because we are one of the lowest priced private um, colleges in the area and um, it's a very good value for what students get. And then um, lastly on this slide, we are among the top best residence halls in New York State. Um, it's very important for students because they ask that question a lot when they're looking at living on campus. Uh, we have wonderful pictures on our website to showcase our residence halls, but it's a wonderful opportunity for students who are looking to live on campus. Next slide. Great, and now we're gonna talk about our undergraduate programs and give you a little bit of an overview about um, what we have to offer here. So next slide, please. Thank you. So here's a listing of our bachelor degree programs. Um, as you can see, we have a number of programs um, listed here. Um, I believe they're listed in uh, some of alphabetical order, but I'll go over a few of them that are you know, very noteworthy. Um, some of our more popular majors we offer are criminal justice and forensic science. Uh, we have a very strong reputation in the area for um, criminal justice and forensic science. And just to give you a little bit of information what that is, so criminal justice, um, we, we are actually one of the top programs in New York State for criminal justice. And the reason for that is because we have a very hands-on program. Um, a lot of our um, faculty come with excellent experience working in the law enforcement field, and they bring that experience to the classroom. So it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity for students to be able to learn in a very hands-on practical way. And there's also a lot of wonderful opportunities for internships for students um, that students really love to take advantage of. Um, and then second to that, as I mentioned, forensic science is another one of our very popular majors as well. Uh, we offer two different tracks for forensic science. Uh, one is the crime scene investigations, the other one is laboratory sciences. Um, some similarities, but also some differences. Um, the laboratory sciences really focuses on the analysis of evidence in laboratory settings where the crime scene investigation individuals are going to study how to properly identify and um, collect evidence um, being analyzed. So those programs, again, very popular with our students and um, they get wonderful hands-on experience in both of those programs. Uh, we also offer a wonderful business management program uh, where students will learn foundational courses in business, ethics, marketing, um, et cetera. So it's a wonderful opportunity. There's opportunities as well for internships for that uh, program as well. Um, we have a sports industry management, which is a very popular program with our student athletes. It combines uh, business programs um, as well as sports um, courses for students who are interested in working on the business side of sports. So it's a, a newer program for us, but a very popular one. Um, we also have uh, political science as well as a digital media and communication program. Um, and with that program, the digital media program is a little bit more in depth when it comes to students learning and honing in on their communication skills. And they can choose to uh, focus on marketing, film and digital arts, multimedia and journalism. There's a lot of different opportunities for specialization within that one. Uh, there's also English. 
we have a psychology, uh, human services, and a, a liberal studies program. Program. Uh, liberal studies um, is a really nice opportunity for students who are not quite sure what they want to study. Um, students can really take a multidisciplinary uh, approach and learn um, a variety of different topics within humanities and social sciences, and they can prepare for careers such as working in education and business and other such fields. So that gives you a little bit of a, of a background about those. Next slide, please. I apologize, folks. It seems that that didn't have the uh, one of our newer programs well, that we've included a biology program as well. I apologize that it's not an updated slide, but we do. Um, we recently actually added a biology program to our um, programs. Uh, that oh, we thanks, Lee. Thank you. I forgot to mention that one. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I can talk a little bit about biology as well. Thanks, Lee. <laughs> so, um, Hilbert's excited to offer its first STEM major in biological sciences. Um, it's going to be a bachelor's in um, biology, as Lee mentioned. Um, it just wasn't on the slide. So the biology degree prepares students to enter professional programs in healthcare and veterinary science. Uh, we also have a new state-of-the-art uh, uh, laboratory that was built for this program. So it's a great opportunity for students who want to um, develop their skills in biological sciences. Okay, thank you. Next slide, please. Thank you. And um, to add to that, we also offer four plus one programs. Um, and what that means is for students who are interested in pursuing their master's degree, we have, I'm sorry, we have an opportunity here at Hilbert where students can opt to take uh, graduate level courses in their senior year. Um, and the advantage of that is is they can take the classes and they will count towards their bachelor's degree, but they will also count towards the graduate degree as well. Uh, so the programs we have here are criminal justice bachelor's degree combined with a master of science in criminal justice administration. We also offer a forensic science bachelor's with a master of science in criminal justice administration, uh, political science with a master of public administration, and then lastly, human services bachelor's with the master's in public administration with a focus on health administration. Ken, did you want to add anything there? No, I think uh, in a few minutes we're going to talk about the grad program. So just okay. keep that in mind. It's a wonderful opportunity. Perfect. Thank you. Next slide, please. So a little bit about the Hilbert Blueprint. This is the foundation that we utilize uh, set for all of our undergraduate students. It is undergraduate school uh, focused, um, promoting a well-rounded experience over the four years. Um, through this, we've seen a graduation placement rate of 96% um, within the six months of graduation. And if you'll go to the next slide, it actually kind of details what is included within the Hilbert Blueprint. So each, each um, year, this is the first year, sophomore, junior, and senior. Um, these are the components that contribute to the um, undergraduate experience. Again, we have the GS 101, the foundation seminar. Um, that's also an option that we offer for the transfers. The free elective is typically what is included in that. Um, because we are so service, um, you know, service learning and community engagement driven, especially within our Franciscan values, um, we very much tie that into the second year. Um, our junior symposium it gets a lot of focus on current events. Um, you know, New York Times is really what's being referenced in that, um, up to date on everything. I am absolutely certain that we will have a lot going on for our juniors this year. Um, we have an upcoming election. We have COVID. Um, there's a lot going on, and I, I, I'm, I'm certain that this is going to, you know, uh, be an interesting uh, year for that for the juniors. And then again with our senior. Capstone, typically they're, they're conducting research, um, sometimes in the form of internships as well, um, different opportunities for them to get that field experience and uh, really look into the areas of um, interest and focus that they um, would like to take out into their career. Next slide. Yeah, so it's uh, poll time now. Uh, so let's look into uh, the uh, questions that uh, uh, we have gone through the presentation. And then uh, let's see, I uh, would request all your active participations. So I'm just waiting for the polls to come out. Yeah, uh, so I'm just launching the polls. Uh, I hope uh, all of you are able to see the polls. Uh, so the first question is, uh, what is the student to faculty ratio at Hilbert College? 
So, um, uh, did uh, in the presentation was it mentioned a uh, twelve is to one? That's twelve students to one faculty, or was it a thirteen is to one, or was it a fourteen is to one student faculty ratio, or was it a fifteen is to one? The second question is how many bachelor degree programs does Hilbert College offer? So, was it nine programs, or was it nineteen programs that was mentioned, or was it uh, twenty nine programs, or was it thirty nine programs? And the third question is, uh, when was Hilbert College founded? Uh, was it mentioned that it was founded in the year 1917? Or was it founded in the year 1937? Or was it founded in the year 1957? Or was it founded in the year 1987? So I'll just wait for a, a, a couple mm -hmm. of seconds more so that uh, people can start voting. Uh, I've seen that 35% of them have voted. We are expecting more votes to come in in the next uh, 10 seconds. And I'll end the uh, poll so that uh, we can proceed with the results. Yeah. So I'm just uh, ending the poll uh, uh, and uh, we'll just see uh, the results. So I'm just sharing the results. Uh, I hope all of you are able to see the results. So 81% uh, of them told the right answer that uh, the student to faculty ratio in Hilbert College is a 12 is to one. And 75% uh, of them have told the right answer that there are 19 undergraduate programs that uh, uh, bachelor degree programs that Hilbert College offers. And 81% uh, of them have told the right answer that it was uh, founded in the year uh, 1957. So uh, over to you, uh, I'm uh, stopping the share of the screen and then, yeah, so we can proceed with the presentation. Well, I guess it's my turn here and I'm and thank you again for taking your time out today to kind of learn a little bit more about Hilbert College. So for the next few minutes, we're gonna talk about our master's programs here at Hilbert. We offer three distinct programs. One is a master's of public administration. The other one is also an MPA degree, um, but with a concentration in health administration. And then to complement what we have in our undergrad program is our Master's of Science in Criminal Justice Administration. At Hilbert, we can go to the next slide, please. Uh, the, the difference in our program here is the way our program is delivered. We had a very convenient option to fit most people's lifestyle and learning style. Within the program, we are a cohort-based program so all of our students start together, either in fall or in the spring, and they kind of move together every five weeks changing classes. So each graduate class are only five weeks long. So it's a lot of information, that's a lot of learning. Uh, we take a, trip, a typical 15 week semester course and put that into five weeks. And we just keep moving and moving all straight through till we complete the 12 courses in the program. So students, the nice part is they're taking actually one course at a time. So their concentration is on that particular course. They have classes on Saturday and then they have the rest of the week to be able to study, research, and also kind of tour and experience what Western New York has to offer. The program is an accelerated cohort program and it takes 16 months from start to finish to go through the program. There generally is a few breaks within there, um, such as for Christmas and Easter, um, but we don't typically get, typically get off summers just like an undergrad program does. So students will join us and typically just stay with us through the 16 months to complete their program and then head out into the world and be able to utilize what they've learned. And just like our undergrad program, we, we are a small campus which provides students that individual attention that they need. Next slide, please. We also have a very career-centered curriculum. So our curriculum is designed for those who, you know, want to jump into their career. Maybe some folks are working in the area, doing internships in the area. We want them to utilize what they've learned yesterday in the classroom, today um, on the work or volunteer setting. We have a wonderful faculty. A lot of our faculty in the undergrad and the graduate are practitioners in the field. So they're either retired or current practitioners. So they can actually give that real world experience of what it's like to be 
uh, within these different disciplines. Within our program, we do not require the GRE or the GMAT, so that testing is not a requirement, which, um, which makes it quite convenient for a lot of folks trying to enter a graduate program. And our next cohort does begin in September, but I know, you know, due to regulations and COVID, the following term will actually be in January of 2021, mid-January. So now I want to talk about, just give you a little bit of overview of what the three programs are about. Our first one is the Master's of Public Administration. So if you're not familiar with this degree, I just would like to break it down. Uh, most people have heard of the MBA, the Master's of Business Administration. I always say this is kind of that sister side to the MBA. We are the MPA, stands for public. And this degree is for those who want to develop their skills, their leadership, management, and a lot of our program and our classroom teaching here deals with learning to develop, administer, and review policy. We look at policy, we look at people, we look at procedures. So I always call that the P's of the public administration. We look at the U.S. government. We do a lot of work within the nonprofit world. You know, how to manage a nonprofit agency how to manage a government agency. Uh, we have quite a few students have moved on from our program and now work in human resources, education, veterans, marketing. And again, all of these skills are very transferable to the public sector. The next actually is our Master's of Public Administration with a concentration in health administration. So the degree that the students earn is still a Master's of Public Administration. So after their name, it would be comma, um, MPA on their um, signature once they've completed the degree. But this one is actually a series of three different courses where we delve a little bit deeper into the healthcare field. So those who are looking to be working in, say, hospital administration or government, um, you know, we have, we have alumni now who are working on the health administration side, you know, leading COVID operations and dealing with you know, kind of the pandemic. So their administrative skills have helped them craft policy that is changing day by day, which I'm sure is happening in your part of the world also. And our next program is our Masters of Criminal Justice Administration. So again, we talk about the, the undergrad being law and justice. This program expands on the administrative side of criminal justice. So we're looking again at those leadership, those policy, those decision-making parts of the degree. So our students have gone on to work at police departments, corrections, border patrol, FBI, district attorney. You know, criminal justice is such a broad industry and with lots of jobs. So, I mean, we actually even have students who are, are now employed in fraud within the banking system. So they've actually, taken this degree and gone into that field. Next slide, please. And the key to our program, you know, besides the 12 courses, you know, we, you know, master's degree is only 12 courses, unlike the undergrad, which is 40. So we're looking to bring folks in and then get them out into the world with their degree in only 16 months. But you look at a series of 12 courses and some of them you're like, oh, I wish I had this course or I wish I learned that or, you know, I have a, I have a very much an interest in this area. So our students all have to undertake a graduate research project. And if you have an opportunity and you visit our website under the graduate student pages, you can take a look at the last 10 years abstracts of all of the research projects people have done. So this is actually what I call personalize your program. So this research project takes them from the start of their program through the culmination. So it's a 16 month project. And something unique to Hilbert is we don't just send the students out and say, okay, conduct research. We also build this into the courses. So as you're moving through this program, the students you know, will be working on parts of their project in and out of different classes, but also Hilbert provides each student with their own personal research mentor. And our research mentors actually get paid. So it's, they have a vested interest to assist the student to get them through with their project. Again, we're not here to 
give the students degrees, but we're actually here to put all the tools in place to give them the opportunity to earn a degree. You know, at the end of their program, they might be published on a topic. At the end of their program, they may want to take their graduate research project and, and we've had students actually end up being employed by the agencies they've done their research project. So with our, some of our students, you know, this has just been the key to launch or enhance or um, any of the careers that they are kind of embarking on. So our next slide. And I'm not sure who's taking leave, taking student services. So um, we'll talk a little bit about um, the different offices we have on campus and the different uh, divisions uh, and what uh, that offers to the students. Uh, so first off, I'll go about talking about the Office of Career and Community Engagement, which is actually, these are two separate offices now. We have the Office of Career Services and we also have the Office of Community Engagement. Career Services is really, um, you know, providing support for students, you know, they're looking to go into these different areas in the industry. Um, so they can utilize research resources such as resume review, um, building cover letters, developing interview skills, um, learning, you know, uh, interview etiquette, uh, networking opportunities. Networking is huge, you know, in, in any industry. It's, you know, getting to know people and learning about what they do and, you know, making those connections that could lead to internships, that could lead to jobs, that could lead to references, all sorts of stuff. And then community engagement, we do a lot with our Office of Service Learning and community engagement. As we mentioned, our Franciscan values really tie into a lot of how we interact with our community, both on and off campus. Um, a lot of our work that we do out in the community, such as a day of service, um, that takes place through the, uh, primarily through the Office of Community Engagement. We also have our Academic Services Center for students seeking resources such as tutoring, as writing support, as assistance with the topic. Um, this is something that our Academic Services Center provides, as well as if they need different supports, maybe some different, there's some ex accessibility components um, that they need. Um, you know, for example, if a student is hard of hearing, making sure that the necessary um, resources are in place to ensure that that student is able to have that equal opportunity and fair opportunity to learn as anyone else would. Our student counseling center, um, mental health is something that we consider to be very important to, um, you know, to our campus. If a student is having difficulty, maybe they're homesick, maybe they're having, you know, issues with a friend or someone, if they, if they just need some mental health support, if they're just seeking that counseling component, it's, it's very important that our students recognize that that's available on the campus. And um, all, by the way, all of these things that I am mentioning on here, there's no additional cost. That's included within the students, uh, the student fees that the student pays. Um, so they don't pay, you know, they don't go to a counseling appointment and, you know, pay a co-pays like some of us do. Um, this is something that the student can schedule an appointment for and they can go, you know, they schedule that appointment and they go and they're not paying anything additional. Next slide. So this is just kind of a breakdown of those components that I just talked about, and just a little more in depth of an ex explanation. Uh, and then that's, there's my office, <laughs> the International Student Services Office. I actually, this is a newer position on the campus. Um, you know, it's very important that we are bringing in uh, opportunities for international students to study in the US. Um, and Hilbert considers this, you know, a, a big priority. Um, so I actually started here in January um, didn't expect that a pandemic would hit in the midst of my uh, beginning at the Hilbert, um, but you know what I'm here to do is to provide the resources necessary to international students. I work closely with Lisa and Kim in terms of the admissions process. Uh, we see you know the international documents coming in, evaluations of transcripts, um, as well as providing the guidance. So a lot of what I do is provide the next steps and explain the next steps, such as filling out their I-20 application. Um, applying for a, a visa interview and all of that, making sure that they've covered their fees, making sure that they have the necessary documentation um, in order to arrive to the U.S., as well as, if, you know, making sure that they know which ones are important documents to have on them, um, providing advising, be it academic, career. Um, I do a lot of work with the international students looking into their internships and potential jobs, so CPT and OPT making sure that they're aware of any updates that CVIS has notified us of, um, you know, such as with going online in, in March, um, you know, that was something I had to communicate 
very quickly to the students that they were still in status, whether they were in the country or not, and they were online, um, providing different programs and activities for the students to be able to interact with the community, as well as have that support of the international student experience um, and making sure that you know they're up to date on everything, that they are remaining in status um, and making sure that they know what resources um, and what opportunities exist for them. And I'm seeing some questions regarding um, potential um, admissions, uh, admissions questions for international students. We actually have a portion uh, later in the, in the presentation for that. So just so you know, that's coming up. Lisa? Sure, I can take this slide. Um, so this next slide talks a little bit about our campus living and our dining experience here on campus. Um, all of our freshman students will enter into um, a building called Trinity Hall, which is for our first year freshmen. We, um, that actually the picture right here is a picture of Trinity Hall. Uh, we offer suite style and double rooms. Uh, um, the uh, dormitories I mentioned earlier, uh, I should like, I should say residence hall that I mentioned earlier. Very, I want to say we're maybe top 10 um, in New York State for our residence halls. We're very proud of that. Um, they're modern, they're spacious. Students, as soon as they see them, they really love them. So we tend to get a, um, a wait list sometimes because there's such a high demand for them. Um, the second residence hall that we have is called St. Joseph Hall. And that also, um, also, also offers double and quad style rooms. Um, and they're also, um, upon request, we do have some single rooms available as well. Uh, for upperclassmen, uh, our juniors and seniors, there are campus apartments that are available. Um, those are four or five person single sex apartments. And again, those are available for our students who are um, in the upperclassmen area. Um, the dining, um, the dining area, um, actually I'm looking at it right now um, in my, from my office. We have a really nice campus dining center. Um, as part of living on campus, students um, can receive unlimited access to a meal plan, which is really nice. So it's part of the room and board package. So they never have to worry about cooking anything. Um, the, the meals are plentiful and they have unlimited access to that. So it's a really nice convenience that students don't have to worry about. And the food is actually very, very good here. Um, then also just um, a couple more little tidbits about campus living. Um, so all students can have a car on campus. I know it's very, um, common for students not to have, not to be able to have cars on campus, but since we have a, a pretty ample uh, space here on our campus, students can have cars, which, which is, which is pretty important. Um, we have free laundry facilities, there's no curfew, so there's a lot of really great benefits to living here on campus. Next slide, please. And I just wanted to uh, make a comment regarding that. Uh, the necessary precautions are being taken both in the, the residence halls and the dining halls. Um, regarding COVID and you know social distancing and everything. I did a walkthrough of the dining hall just last week um, and they've, you know, they've reorganized it to, I believe it's 50% 50 50 capacity, but they're also making sure that all students have a to-go container, a reusable to-go container so that they still have the opportunity to of course eat, but may not be able to eat within the hall at all times. Thanks, Lee. Okay, so service learning, we talked a little bit about this earlier, but at Hilbert, um, we are very connected and committed to serving our community. So all students are enrolled in um, traditional um, undergraduate programs that are required to complete service learning projects. Um, so what the service learning is, if you're not familiar with it, it's an educational approach that really combined learning objectives with community service. So as part of our Franciscan mission, it is something that is very near and dear to us. So it's something that we feel is very important and, and it's part of our curriculum for our students to be able to make a commitment to service learning. And it's tied to an academic course in order to graduate. So it is a, it is a requirement for students to be able to do this in, in, in order to graduate. Um, the commitment is made by our administration, reinforces 
as I mentioned, the importance of the connection made through service in educating the students and really increasing their understanding of society and becoming good citizens. So we get, so as I mentioned, we do believe it's a very important part of creating a, a well-rounded college experience. Um, and it's part of the um, blueprint that Lee mentioned earlier. I mean, it's something that um, students really tend to enjoy as well. I mean, students um, enjoy service so much that many times, um, majority of our students take on more service um, projects than that's what's required of them. So it's a really great opportunity to, to provide that service, but also um, it's, it really gives them an opportunity to uh, really serve the community at large as well. Next slide, please. Okay, so student activity. So it's not all books in classroom. We like to um, obviously um, have an opportunity for students to really enjoy themselves and have fun and be able to uh, really in enjoy the um, social side of, of going to college. So we do also offer a number of clubs and activities. Um, as you see here, we have a, we have a, a number of social and cultural um, honor societies, club sports. Um, many of our students uh, are in, involved in clubs that are uh, maintained by their department. So for example, we have a very strong criminal justice club and forensic science club. We have um, a number of different opportunities that students can, in, can be involved with. Um, we also have a wide variety of activities that we have on campus. Um, concerts and dances, lectures, um, St. Francis Week celebration, uh, parent and family weekend. So a lot of opportunities for social interaction because we really want students to know that there's a lot of, um, you know, the engagement part of, it is, of college life is important. We want them to be able to um, be involved, make friends, you know, uh, network with other students. So there's lots of opportunities to do that if students choose to do that. Next slide, please. Okay, and our athletics. So we have um, a very strong athletics program. We are part of the NCAA Division III college um, division. Um, we are a member of the Allegheny Mountain Coll Collegiate Conference and Northeastern um, Athletic Conference. Uh, some of our more popular um, sports, I will say we have baseball, basketball, the ball, um, cross country, um, soccer, lacrosse, softball, volleyball. I'm not sure if I'm missing any. any you guys can jump in if there's anything I'm missing. But um, the, the athletics program here is very strong and students really enjoy that part. Uh, we um, love our student athletes. And, and as I mentioned, there's um, with COVID going on right now, we're not really sure what's going to be happening in the fall for athletics. Um, Lee, you might be able to um, add something to that. I'm not sure if you have any additional information on what's available for sports coming up this oh, fall semester. Oh, right now. But, um, oh, okay. right now. Sorry, it's I'm getting feedback. Sorry about that, Lisa. Um, right now, no, it's okay. A, they're um, they kind yeah. of have a restriction on competition, especially with different, uh, you know, colleges competing against each other. Um, they are trying to do something more localized and there may be a component where they have more of an intramural um, so a lot more within the uh, Hilbert community itself uh, and I do believe that they are still um, you know trying to uh, coordinate uh, practices and trainings within the teams themselves to keep that safety component in there but also to keep the students um, you know ready to go once the I, I believe um, a few of our more high contact um, athletics are being moved to spring 2021. So for example, I believe soccer, we're hoping to see played in the, in the, um, in the spring, which I am very much hoping for, because I'm a huge soccer fan. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. Um, but that's something that, you know, we're also going by New York state and federal mandates to ensure that we are um, remaining compliant with that, as well as protecting, uh, you know, all students and uh, staff involved in all of that. And we, we are seeing a, a large number, just for everyone, we are seeing a larger number of international students um, in the athletics, um, you know, coming in on the athletics end. So we're really seeing some representation there. Um, you know, one, my first day here was meeting with, uh, with athletic students. The majority of the students I met with that day were, athletic, were athletes. So it's something that it's really great to see that representation on the campus. Right, thanks, Lee. Next slide, please.
Campus Safety um, provides um, security and safety programs and offers around the clock patrol services to the campus community. Um, we all often get a lot of questions about this in admission because obviously campus safety is of utmost um, importance to us and we take it very seriously. We do offer 24-7 um, security. We, uh, we have New York State licensed officers. Uh, we also offer um, emergency blue light phones on campus. So if students are walking on campus um, and if there ever was an emergency, they can um, quickly uh, look for one of the emergency blue light phones to call for help. Uh, we do also offer safety escort services. So if a student ever wants an escort to their classroom or to the car, um, you know, during, you know, during their time on campus, we certainly offer that as a uh, service as well. And I believe campus health safety also offers safety courses. Um, campus safety is also responsible for enforcement of college rules and policies, and they work really hard to ensure the campus is a very safe place to learn and to live. So next, next slide, please. Yeah, so it's our uh, second uh, poll time. Uh, so let's see uh, what are the questions that are there for this uh, poll. Yeah, so uh, the first question is, uh, I hope all of you are able to uh, see the polls. The first question is, I would request everyone to uh, rate your audio and video qualities for this webinar. If you are able to hear us and uh, see us properly, so you can uh, rate it in the terms of excellent, uh, very good, good and poor. The second question is, uh, what is the duration of the master's degree program at Hilbert College? So uh, uh, did Ms. Kim uh, 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 tell, was it a 12 month program or was it a 16 month program or was it a 20 month program or a 24 month program? And the final question is, uh, how many master uh, degree programs does uh, Hilbert College offer? So was it mentioned uh, one program or was it mentioned three programs? Or was it mentioned uh, five programs or was it mentioned 10 programs? So I would uh, give another uh, 10 seconds for all of you to vote in and uh, uh, let us know how exactly were you able to uh, rate the video audio qualities, how many, um, what is the duration of the master degree program uh, and also how many master degree programs does Hilbert College offer? Yes. So I'll be ending the polls now and I'll just uh, tell the results of uh, what exactly has been answered. So uh, thanks that 63% of them uh, have uh, rated the audio and video quality as excellent and 21% of them have uh, uh, rated it very good. Uh, and also 74% uh, uh, of them have given the right answer of 16 months. So all the three, uh, uh, a master's degree program that Hilbert College offers is a 16 month program. So all students can save eight months, which is uh, usually it's uh, it's a two year program wherein you can save these uh, uh, these months. And then uh, uh, finally, uh, the uh, the third question, 47% uh, um, uh, of them have given the right answer that uh, Hilbert College offers three uh, uh, master degree programs. So thank you so much for um, participating in this polls and I will uh, go back to the presentation and uh, over to you. Okay, so we'll be talking a little bit about the application requirements and the costs. Um, so primarily when you're filling out that international application requirement um, for Hilbert, Hilbert College, first and foremost, you have to complete the application itself. Um, then you're gonna need to provide that supporting documentation. So the uh, transcripts, um, so I, I you know, this is specifically towards undergraduate. Kim will talk about the graduate component, but a lot of this does also apply. So we will need any transcripts. So for example, high school transcripts, um, if it's, you know, typically we're gonna need that, um, that evaluation, especially um, when it's not on the same grading scale as we are in the US. Um, so some of the ones that we use include Wes, um, Joseph Silney. Um, those are just a few, uh, you know, that we've seen um, but we do need the evaluation of the, uh, of the transcript itself. Um, that'll determine what it's on in our uh, US scale, what the student could potentially qualify for in terms of scholarships. We, all requ we also require English proficiency. Um, we do have a, a bit of a breakdown on our website uh, regarding our um, requirements. I just have the screen up, I'm sorry, it just went dark on my, 
on my other computer, but in terms of the English requirements on our TOEFL exam, we have about a minimum score of the 500 PBT or 70 IBT. And in terms of the IELTS, an average of a 5.4 or better. Um, sometimes we do see students coming from a country where English is the primary language. Um, so typically, you know, we can waive it in that case. We also have encountered, I can, you know, say that a few months ago, I actually met with a student who is located in a country where English is not the primary language. However, the high school that they attend is a U.S. specific um, uh, school. So we were able to, you know, we were able to set up a call with the student, determine their English proficiency from there as well. Um, but typically we are going to require that English proficiency documentation exceptions may be able to be made. Um, it has happened a bit with the pandemic, but primarily we are still seeing those documents come in. Um, re recommended but not required are the SAT or the ACT scores, um, a letter of recommendation uh, from, you know, a few different um, uh, so re, uh, a few different sources, as well as a personal statement if the student would like to include that. Um, once an acceptance uh, is issued and a decision is made, um, the student will then uh, have to follow a few steps, including the 275 enrollment fee that goes towards the, um, that goes towards the students, um, the bill itself. Um, so then once the student is accepted, what they will have to do is fill out the I-20 application um, that is on our website that should also be included in the acceptance letter as well. The student is going to go ahead and fill out the, that, uh, that application and include any um, documentation that is required with it, including financial statements, copy of passport, um, you know, those different components that will be required for us to then be able to issue the I-20. Um, an I-20 is, they're always going to have to have their I-20 when they're traveling both, you know, out of the country and back in. Really, the I-20 is one of the most important documents that the students will have um, once they are on that F-1 visa and enrolled at the college. Next slide. For the graduate program, besides needing the um, application and the materials and the post-secondary transcripts, official transcripts, we also need to include a personal statement, at least 500 words. You know, why do they want to take the program? What do they want to get out of it? You know, we look at that for writing style. We look at that for um, to make sure that we're guiding them as counselors into the right program. We would like to see a cur current resume, two letters of recommendation, and again, all of their college transcripts. So these are just a few extra things that are needed for those looking to enroll in one of the master's programs here at Hilbert College. Next. Okay. Here are the fees for our, in our, our international undergraduate program our tuition, then we break that down with the housing. There's the international service fee, and this is based on per year. It's kind of an estimated of what books and personal transportation would cost. And then again, all of our students have to have health insurance, so that's the estimated cost of health insurance. So in our, our international undergrad students are looking at around 40,000 US dollars per year for a program here at Hilbert College. Lisa, do you want to talk about the scholarships? Sure, I'll take that. So uh, we offer um, a number of different scholarship opportunities for our international students um, based on their academic GPA. So you can see here that we do offer a Hilbert scholarship, which is the highest scholarship for someone with a 3.5 or above. GPA, the award would be a $10,000 scholarship plus a $1,500 housing award to go towards their housing here on campus. Uh, the next tier would be our Provost Scholarship for someone who might fall. I'll be awarded at the $4,000 level with a $1,500 housing award. Um, for someone who falls a little bit below that, um, guideline of 2.499 or less. Um, unfortunately, they don't qualify for an academic scholarship, but they, they will qualify for a housing um, award of $5,000. Next slide, please. The graduate programs cost out a little bit differently. Um, this is 
our tuition and fee, the 24,940 US dollars is the fee for the entire program. Um, again, these are our fall tuition, you know, obviously could change, um, which actually was a 20% tuition reduction from last year at this time. So it's actually a very good value for the education that you receive in the degree. Uh, the, there's the estimated cost of the housing, the international service fee again, and that's broken up because that includes the four terms. Our graduate program, again, the 16 month is actually over four semesters. The estimate for personal expenses and then the health insurance. So that is um, below here is the estimated cost for a graduate program for a student who chooses to live on campus here at Hilbert College. Next slide, please. You know, we invite you to visit the campus, um, but since you're kind of far away, we have we have the virtual tour available on our website, and I believe we'll be sharing these slides and links with you after the, the visit here today. So please take some time and take a short tour around campus with our virtual tour. And I think that leaves us for any questions. Yeah, so uh, thank you. Uh, we have a few questions uh, that are uh, really uh, interesting ones. Uh, the first one is about uh, the pre-med program. So uh, can you give a small brief on um, how an international student uh, can uh, enter into the pre-medical program and what would be the process for them uh, uh, to get into a medical school? I could take that. So the um, the process for applying to one of our pre-professional programs, such as pre-med, um, is really the same process as all of our other programs. Um, we would require the application. Um, we would require uh, your transcript uh, to be um, evaluated if it's not from a, a, a U.S. Um, school of, of some sort. So we would need a credential evaluation um, of your transcript. But the process would be a very similar process to um, any of the other undergraduate programs we have. Um, the difference is, um, as a pre-professional program, students would be able to um, major in, uh, pre-med is not itself a, a academic major, it's a pre-professional track. So a student can actually major in um, any, any, pretty much any other of the academic majors we have, as well as being pre-med, if, if that makes sense. Sure. And I'd and say in regards to the pre-med component sure. of applying for the pre-med, that's going to depend entirely on the institution as well as the overall, I, or, you know, where they're applying rather, you know, their medical program. Um, I will say that um, you know, I have a close friend who's going through this process right now, you know, it's really going to be seeing those courses that they took within, you know, that, that apply. So like, for example, biology, I, medical schools are really going to be looking at what courses were included in there, maybe potential research that these students did. Um, you know, our student, you know, a lot of medical students are taking their MCAT one summer and then that entire rest of the year they're doing their interviews for medical school. Um, so it's, it's, the process after that, you know, what, completing their undergraduate component and going into medical school is going to depend entirely on the medical schools that they're applying to. Thank we, you. Can't, we can't answer for them, unfortunately. No problem. Uh, the second one is uh, the criminal justice program, the forensic science programs, both in crime scene investigation and the laboratory science, and the master of science in criminal justice administration. Uh, can uh, international students, um, uh, are there job possibilities uh, out, uh, in their home countries after they complete this program? And what are the optional practical training options that they uh, get, uh, get to do after completing these uh, three programs? Could you repeat the first part of that question? Yeah, uh, the first part is that can international students, for example, they come and study in the US and if they're returning back to their hometowns, uh, will they be able to get uh, a job that uh, for what they have studied or is it specifically for the US alone that is being taught? Um, so, I mean, a lot of students that I've seen in the past, you know, they take, they come to a U.S. institution to get the, the degree at a U.S. school to be able to take it back to their home country, um, to be able to apply it to the different practices 
um, that are taking place there if they maybe if they want to see you know contribute to you know that you know what's what's taking place maybe implement you know see if they can implement new practices with their in their in their own community um, some students also just determine that they want to stay in the U.S. a bit longer and they do a year, they do OPT and then the, you know they get that experience in the job force in the U.S. with that degree and then take it back to their country and apply it um, to the same industry within their community. Um, it it depends. It, it really depends on their country and you know you know you know for example, I mean criminal justice as we mentioned out here. There's a huge um, uh, criminal justice, you know, uh, community within the Erie County alone, within the county that Hilbert is located in. It, it, I think it's something that can be applied anywhere, you know, the skills and the and the knowledge that the students are gaining. Um, but it, it, I, I guess it would depend on a country by country basis. Sure. Thank you so much. Uh, the next question is uh, with regards to the senior capstone, it is told that uh, the internship, uh, a student will get an internship or a research facility uh, for if they have a minimum of a 3.0 GPA. So is this uh, being provided from the college or the student has to identify it by themselves? If you could just give a little of that process because a few students are, a uh, few agents are interested to know about that. Sure. Uh, most of our programs in the undergrad have the, um, the internship as one of the requirements also within a program. So there are internship coordinators on campus who help secure internships in the student's area of interest. And the internship actually becomes also part of a course. So there's accountability for the students. They, um, there's assignments. You know, they're covered by Hilbert Insurance when they are out at a site working. But, um, you know, we believe in internships. You know, that's why we want that part of our program, because we want students to have a very much a hands-on experience to see, you know, what their industry is like. You know, and especially an international student, they get to experience it from the U.S. side. And then when they go back to their home country, you know, they'll have that global comparison to bring back to their um, industry within their home country. Sure. Thank you so much. The next one is, is uh, a particular gap. That is, uh, is there an age limit for students to come and study their undergraduate programs in Hilbert College uh, or the master uh, programs, the graduate programs in Hilbert College? Are, are there some age restrictions? Can they, uh, like for example, complete their grade 12, uh, take a break, a justifiable break, and then come and join in? Yeah, the master's program, we have actually no age requirements. So I think later 60s was probably one of our oldest students we've had so far. So it, um, you know, they, they may choose alternate housing than campus housing, um, <laughs> you know, but, but again, they may want to revert back to it and, and experience that life again. But um, yes, there is no age gap, but, you know, and one thing with our program, a lot of the students within our program are people who have maybe worked in the workforce and want either additional training or want to do something for self-motivation. And so there, again, no age requirements, just a desire and willingness to learn. Sure. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, so I think uh, we have uh, answered most of the questions that have been asked. Uh, so uh, uh, really great points that have been mentioned. And we were also able to address a few questions. Uh, but in case if any of our attendees, our uh, partner agents do have any other questions, our uh, global admission executive will drop in uh, her co contact details. And then you can get in touch with us for any queries, applications, or any required resources from uh, Hilbert College. So uh, I would request all our panelists for their closing lines uh, for, on this knowledgeable, driven, knowledge driven webinar that has been given. Um, I'll start here. I really just want again, thank you for taking the time today to learn a bit of, more about Hilbert College, our programs, what we have to offer. You know, on the graduate side, if you do have a student that is interested, they are, we are more than um, willing and available to set up a Zoom meeting with some of the faculty to go in a little more in depth into the program and what we have to offer. So please use me as a resource for additional information. And thank you so much for representing Hilbert out in the world globally. Yeah, I, I want to echo that. I want to thank you all, especially for coming today and joining us, you know, wherever you may be, however early or late it may be. 
Um, we really appreciate you taking the time to meet with us today, as well as the, all the work that you're doing. I mean, we've been seeing, you know, the great work that MSM does, and we really appreciate everything that you're doing um, and, you know, everything that you're representing uh, for Hilbert College. And I just want to wish you and all your loved ones to stay, stay, stay safe, stay healthy, and, you know, we're hoping that we can do one of these again and maybe, you know, down the road, maybe, who knows, maybe we'll all be in one place and it's in a gathering. We, we'll see what happens. But again, thank you so much for uh, meeting with us today and all the work that you do. And to, and to the same point my colleagues just mentioned, thank you for the opportunity. It's been really wonderful getting a chance to um, present information to you about Hilbert College. And if anyone has any any you know, questions, please feel free to reach out to us. We're always happy to um, accommodate you in any way we can to you know, help you um, answer questions and um, certainly feel free to use us as a resource. Thank you. Sure. So uh, thank you uh, to all our panelists for this wonderful and insightful presentation. And uh, before we sign off, uh, just to give our attendees uh, that we, are at M uh, we at MSM are uh, uh, happy to see that MSM Live Agent E Summit 2020 Live has been informative and a useful resource to all our partner agents. And re would request all of you to follow us on our Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube platform to stay updated on our upcoming events. You can also visit our, uh, our website, uh, www.msquaremedia.com to get further updates. So thank you for participating in, this, uh, in today's webinar. We hope to see you again next time. Stay home, stay safe. Thank you so much.